Alrighty, what is it already? Pretender here, back with another Honkai Star Wars Guide, and today I sort of want to talk about the idea of why you as a player should definitely consider summoning for Akron over the fact of skipping her. Pretty much this video aims to address most of the restrictions and the reasons people do want to end up skipping Akron, and I'm pretty much just going to tackle it as best as I can to try to convince you to summon, because I do have some reasons that I do want to convince to other people that why Akron herself might be one of the most future-proof DPSs we will be getting, despite how her restrictions seem. And so yeah, this video aims to going through that, and as the time this video goes up, there is pretty much only 10 to 12 hours left until the 2.1 update drops and Akron will be available to summon on. So, hopefully you do see this and hopefully this is like the last thing to make your decision. Obviously, this won't apply to everyone. Some people won't care about these. Some people will still want to skip anyways and that's completely fine. I'm just doing my best to give you the reasons why you should summon. Anyway, before I get into the video, if you guys say drop a like on the video, hit the sub button, turn on the bell icon for future videos like this, along with other types of showcases, guides, Honka Star on News, all that kind of stuff, and let's get straight into the video. So first, let's talk about the Nihility Trace restriction. So the biggest concern was the fact that people are really not wanting to run her with two Nihility characters. As you do see with this trace called the Abyss, when there are one or two Nihility characters other than Akron in the team, the damage dealt by Akron's basic attack skill and ultimate increases to 115% or 160% of the original damage respectively. Pretty much 45% of a difference when you're running two compared to one. So overall, it does seem like a nice thing. And that also has sparked the idea of this E2 being needed because what it does is it takes the max requirement for Nihility characters, which is 2, and reduces it to 1. So when you have one other Nihility character, you have the full 160%. This also does give you a point of slash stream and inflicts a stack of Crimson Knot. If you don't know what that is, pretty much it's with her talent. The way Akron works is she doesn't function off regular energy. She functions off these charges called slash dream. Pretty much, once you reach 9 points, as it says on the talent right here, the ultimate can be activated, and then you can do it. Only way to get it, as it says, when any unit inflicts a debuff on an enemy target while using their ability, Akron gains 1 point of slash dream, and inflicts 1 crimson knot on the target. Pretty much, besides inflicting debuffs and using the skill, there's no other way to get it. There are many ways to do it, as your nihility characters would be debuffing, Akron using her skill, Akron's light cone actually applies a debuff too, so it's still really good. Universal Trend Market, LC, when they hit you, you apply Burn on them, which is considered debuff, that's another thing. There's a lot of ways to go about debuffing. And so first, addressing the issue of the Trace, where you do need two Nihoti characters, and how some people say, ah, they might not have the Nihoti characters. There is a pretty good amount of workarounds. Welt is a standard character, which obviously he is a 5-star, so not everyone has this, but I'm just going to briefly talk about him. There is a way where you can just use him with the team as a sub DPS or you can build them as a sustained slot. Pretty much building sustained welt would remove the fact that you need a sustain and it would also fill one of the nihility requirements so you'd have one nihility character and him as your sustained character. The whole idea with sustained welt is you pretty much slow and imprison and you time it correctly just so the enemy can never actually attack you and so you can continuously dish out damage and it is sort of difficult to pull off but with the right setup it is possible. But mainly Gwenaifin is going to be a free 4-star and was just a free 4-star and a ton of people will have her right now and she is actually a fantastic option with Akron. Again, if you didn't pick her on this current event, the next event coming out on 2.1 will have an option to pick her. And the reason she's so good is because her skill does apply a debuff, being the Fire Dot. And her herself does good damage, but mainly because of Fire Kiss. Pretty much when you do inflict someone with Fire Kiss, they take 7% increased damage and can stack up to 3 times pretty much getting a 21% increased damage onto the enemy. With it being very easy to apply this and the debuffs with Gwenaifen, she is a fantastic option to run with Akron. Not only is she just fantastic, she is also pretty much free to play now. And so she is a really good option you can do, and obviously because she's a 4 star, some people might have her max dupe, some dupes, anything is better than nothing. So she is a really good character. Another thing to consider is Pela is also going to be practically her second best partner, due to the fact that she has such a good defense lower with her ult. As you see, when exposed, enemies' defense is reduced by 40% for two turns. Pretty much with her ult being able to apply a debuff, and if you combine this with certain LC, which you don't need, you can apply another debuff with the skill or basic attack, and if you do have Pela E4, you apply a debuff with the skill. The so Pela is another fantastic option, and not only that, Pela will actually be on Akron's banner, so there are a good amount of chances you can have if you are summoning for Akron to pull Pela. So for the most part, almost everyone probably has Pela by now, with dupes or with not. And even if you don't, there is a good chance you might pull her while going for Acheron. 
And so now, more of a way to combat Akron's idea of having two Nehodi characters. There is one thing that is actually calc to be better. I don't know the exact calculations yet, and I can't listen because there's no official ones. But running one Nehodi teammate with one of the Harmony supports is a actual better option. Because Sparkle and Bronia specifically do give her either Sparkle giving a 50% action forward or Bronia giving a 100% just letting her take a turn again. The damage output you get from that is actually said to be higher than just having the double Nihility characters. So pretty much your team would be something like Akron, a Nihility character, be it whoever you want, a Harmony support being Sparkle, Ruan, May, Bronia, and then your last style would be a sustain. And obviously if you're doing sustain well, that becomes even easier. Sparkle be able to provide a bunch of crit damage, giving damage dealt, giving attack percent, all that does add up a lot for Akron. Ruan May providing damage increases, weakness break efficiency, the all-type breast pen and the debuff with their ultimate is also really good. Speed increase, all that stuff. It's just insane how much they can apply. Same with Bronia with their full action forward, increasing her damage, giving crit damage with the ultimate, and just giving her the ability to do more damage by just being on the field. She is also another fantastic option, and that's why running a Harmony Supporter is still a better option technically than running Double Nihility. So if you do have one of these characters, you have an even better option than just being stuck to wanting to have the full Abyss Trace. Now talking more about our Lekon, as we do know, sadly, the jump between her signature Lekon and the Good Night and Sleep Well at R5, the jump is pretty massive because what this Lekon gives you the ability to inflict a debuff now because Akron herself doesn't inflict a debuff besides the ultimate. Being able to do increased damage and even more increased damage with the all and a crit damage stat stick. What this Lycon provides you is insane compared to Good Night Sleep Well. Especially if you don't have it dupe because this is only coming back for what the second time I think since the game has launched. So not many people have it at R5. And even at R5 with having it fully stacked, having the 72% damage down increase, it's still not better than a signature light gun because of the idea that this light gun applies a debuff. So why I might be talking about the light guns is because there is actually a new 4 star light gun coming out that does give crit rate and also increases crit damage by a really good amount when an enemy is defense lowered or inflicted with slow. So if you have characters like Pela, Black Swan who can inflict defense lower or if you have Welt or Silverwolf, Silverwolf can do both and then Welt can inflict slow, that light cone becomes so much better because what it does is just gives you a bunch of crit damage and gives you some crit rate and Akron herself doesn't give herself any crit rate and her light cone doesn't give her any crit rate either so the extra crit rate you get is really nice. Not only that is there probably will eventually be new light cones you can use on Akron going forward because they are wanting to have Nihility be more on the DPS side too, not just Dot, as we do see with Akron, as Welt has been like a DPS that isn't a Nihility Dot character either. So there is a high possibility that we might eventually get another Lycone that could be free even. But for now, we do know that 4-star Lycone is coming in the near future. Now tackling the idea of why Akron is, in my opinion, going to be future-proof is now we do have all these crazy setups, such as Sustain Welt, just running the double Nihility or one Nihility with a Harmony support. The damage output Akron just has on her own is so high. Being able to easily gain stacks from multiple ways such as the trend of the universal market, all that kind of stuff. Overall, she's sitting in a really good spot right now. Obviously less when it comes to not having her signature light gun. Moving away from that is the reason I do think she's future proof is one, her damage output so high so that obviously puts her above a lot of other DPSs in the game. The other idea is that there will be future characters that are Nihility and will also be debuffers rather than Dot. We already have rumored to have one character being made just specifically to be really good with Akron. Being on the Nihility path and also being really good at inflicting debuffs, helping Akron a lot. So having that as a really good reassurance just because that probably does mean we'll get a lot more characters. That obviously means we might get more debuffers like Silverwolf or DPS slash debuffers like Welt. Now with the one that we already know is being made will be eventually available. And going forward there will be more characters like that. Pretty much every time they do release a character like that, that indirectly will be buffing Akron because now you have another potential candidate for a teammate for her. And so all those reasons does sort of make it to where I do think most players should definitely go for Akron. Obviously, there still will be cases where you can just be safe to skip. If you don't like her, then it is what it is. If you just don't like her playstyle, it is what it is. Maybe you have enough lightning characters and all that. Like, it's... If this video can't convince you then and you were just dead to skip anyways, then I can't really do anything about that. This is more to help people that 
really want to summon or are thinking to summon but are skipping for the fact of their light cone or the nihility like requirements that they think is too detrimental or too difficult and they don't have the teams this is more addressed to them just so i could say there will be future units coming out that will help her directly there will be more free to play units like Gwenaifen becoming free wealth in the standard all that kind of stuff there's a lot of workarounds on inflicting debuffs like universal trend funny little builds you can do as sustained wealth there is a new Lycan coming out and there probably will be more in the future. There's just a lot of things covering her in the near future. So Akron already being such a powerful character at launch but with her damage output, the fact that she will not only get better with time is honestly scary because she's already insanely good if you can just do a decent setup. And the fact that she'll get even better and better as time goes on is insane. So yeah, I hope you guys did find this video helpful. Let me know if you guys will be summoning because again, by the time this video comes out, there's only 10 to 12 hours depending on if they end the maintenance early. Or when Akron will come out on all servers. I definitely will be summoning and I will have a summon video out. I'm excited because I do have enough materials to get her up. I actually don't remember if I have enough books though, so that's kind of a yikes. So I'm just gonna hope I do, and I'm also gonna pull in the Lotro rerun, so a lot of summoning for me, anyways. Anyways, hope you guys found the video helpful. Peace out.